In this lecture, I'm going to provide a basic overview of PHP and look at some of the uh, language features. Uh, this is material that's drawn from one of the chapters uh, in the reading list called PHP Basics. And I'm covering up to uh, compound data types in this lecture. Um, I will have several lectures that I'll go over this particular chapter. Um, but uh, the idea here is to just kind of give you a general idea of some of the things that PHP can do uh, before we dive into doing a whole bunch of programs. So PHP is a server-side scripting language that enables you to create dynamic web pages. So I uh, quoted scripting here, um, which is a common term that's used. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's an easy language to use, um, but uh, nonetheless, that's one of the terms that's used for it. Uh, but it is a fully functional language that has a, a number of uh, really good features that allow you to create dynamic web pages. Um, in, in particular, uh, it allows you to um, to do some things on the server side um, so that you're basically pre-processing your HTML um, prior to um, serving it um, to client uh, web browsers. One of the uh, features of PHP that is especially useful is its ability to integrate with databases such as MySQL, uh, which is uh, what we will be doing in the class. Um, and this brings me to a note on what a LAMP server is. I know that we've talked about this a little bit, but uh, we're especially going to be doing two pieces of the, um, the LAMP acronym um, in uh, this next section of the course, and especially PHP, but of course also MySQL, um, which uh, you know, both of those together will allow us to access information that's on servers uh, in a seamless way and then serve those files to a client. So PHP can be used in a number of different ways. Uh, most commonly, it's embedded directly in HTML. And we're going to see some examples of that here in this lecture. But it also can be used to generate HTML. So you create a PHP um, script program um, that um, will just basically output HTML. It will print out HTML. And then the things that are actually generated then are served to a client uh, through the HTTP protocol. The other thing that you can use PHP for is uh, as an XML generator, which is extremely interesting, especially if you are doing things like creating an XML web service, where you're not necessarily creating a formatted HTML page, but rather what you're doing is creating um, an XML file, an XML document, if you will, that is provided to some client process. Uh, and, you know, looking at the way that the industry is going, um, this is a very important feature um, to be able to create these types of XML web services, which is all part of the XML course that I teach that is um, taught in another semester, um, but um, is uh, definitely related to the kinds of things that we would do um, with um, client-server architectures especially on the server side when you want to be able to um, provide uh, you know, a standard interface to data that you might have on your server. So when a PHP is considered a server-side language, uh, since it is executed on the server and not in the browser, uh, as opposed to, say, JavaScript, which is actually executed in the browser. Uh, that being said, uh, when you actually access a PHP file on the server when you browse to it. What you are given, if you try to view the sources, you will actually view not the PHP source, but actually the, um, uh, the HTML, because that's what's actually um, provided to the, um, to the browser on the client side. So the basic syntax of PHP is shown here. There's basically two different forms. One of them is a default form where you have this angle bracket, question mark, PHP, and then your PHP code. So our simple print, um, print hello world program. 
um, is shown here. And you see here that everything is closed with the question mark angle bracket. On the right hand side we have the short tag form which uh, if you look on the servers uh, you can tell whether or not you are you have short tags enabled um, and we'll look at that in one of the podcasts um, but anyway you'll see here in the short form you can use angle bracket question mark and then print hello world and then it, and then question mark angle bracket um, anyway either form is is uh, is acceptable uh, if you want to be explicit, then you can use the PHP part um, in that opening tag. If you're lazy, which most of us are, you can use this, uh, this form here. And you'll see this a lot in programs anyway. So um, I don't think there's any advantage to using one or the other. Um, I think that both of them are, are, are just as well just as, um, and used uh, just as often. Um, there's actually other forms that are mentioned in the text of other things that you could use to uh, uh, display or other formats that you can use, but these are the two most common. So one of the things that you can do is embed multiple code blocks, multiple PHP code blocks within your HTML document. And this is one of the most common forms of how you would use PHP, as shown here in this document, uh, in this slide. So you have your HTML document, and then in various places you would put um, PHP. And actually, let me change something here in this slide because we're kind of missing some of the highlighting, and I might as well just put it in now before I move on. So anyway, so these are the parts that are actually PHP. So you have uh, in the title, printing PHP, hello world, and then in the code, in the body part, <clears throat> you have um, a variable being created in a PHP block. And you see here that I've used the long form, and this one uses short form. But we've set a date, and then in another part of the document, we're actually using the date. Uh, one of the things you'll notice here is that the scope for the date variable is the page. Um, so if I create a variable in one block, as I've shown here, then I can use it in another block. Anyway, so this is one way to use, and it's probably the most common way that PHP is used, is directly embedded um, in, a, in an HTML document. But you can also use PHP to generate all of the HTML. I haven't shown it here in, in this example. We'll see one probably later. Um, but uh, I think this is the, the form that you'll see most often. The comments in PHP are just like um, the comments in Java, I suppose. Uh, you have the single line C++ style and then the multiple line C style with the, the um, slash asterisk, asterisk slash. And one of the major things that you'll do with PHP is um, use print statements or some sort of uh, generative statement to output something on a page. And so there are three different functions that you can use to do this. There's the print function, the echo function, and the printf function. The print function uh, essentially is just you use the print keyword and then um, some string that you're going to output. And if you look back in our example here, that's what was happening here. I, and you can actually exclude the use of the parentheses when you're doing a print. The echo statement is very similar, uh, if not identical, except for the output. Um, oh, uh, I believe that the print statement will output false if it's unable to print, which um, I very rarely see that. Uh, but it does have the advantage that you can put the print uh, into a function, into while statements or whatever it is that you want to do, um, and it will evaluate. Whereas uh, echo uh, returns void, and so you, while well, you can put those into function evaluations and so forth, uh, they're pretty much vacuous. Uh, the echo statement has the other advantage that you can um, output many um, strings, not just a single string, unlike um, the print statement, and you can separate them, those with commas, and it'll print them all out. 
You can also do string concatenation, which <clears throat> um, I'll mention uh, a, a little bit later. Um, but anyway, you can have you know any number of strings within your echo statement. You can also also use the boolean um, printf statement, which is similar to um, C. C++ also uses printf, and there's even a printf uh, within Java that has the same sort of format. See the text for the formatting directives on um, printf. I won't cover them here. So there are many different built-in types, um, data types that you can use within PHP. I don't know how readable this is, but um, you have the Boolean type, the integer type, floating point type, and the string. The Boolean um, takes values of true and false. Um, no surprise there. Uh, any non-zero number represents true. So negative 1, 1, 5, 35, negative 275, all of those would represent um, the value true if uh, evaluating the variable as a Boolean. And then zero represents false. The integers uh, include a decimal type, um, which would just be the number, an octal, which is a leading zero, followed by an octal number. Hexadecimal has the zero x heading before the hexadecimal number. Floating point types, as you would expect, um, separated by a decimal point. And you have the um, same a common style for the floating point numbers with the E followed by some number. Plus and minus indicate the uh, precision of the floating point number. And then finally, you have the string types. There are two different ways that you can represent them. One is with the double quotes. The other is with the single quote. They're pretty much the same. Um, I, I know that there are some minor differences, and semantically there are some places where you have to use a single quote or you have to use a double quote. Um, but there, um, there are things that you can refer to in a lot of different texts that are out there. Um, but I don't think that there's a whole lot of difference between using one or the other. With strings, um, another thing that I wanted to point out is the fact that um, you can reference strings using an array notation. So if I uh, have a variable called color and it's equal to maroon, then um, the second location or location 2 would be R, so 0, 1, 2. Um, so that's actually really convenient if you need to do things like you know, access specific parts of a string or you're doing substrings or whatever else. Um, that array notation ends up being pretty useful. And then finally, uh, the other thing with strings is that you can concatenate them using the period. So if I have two variables, Jerry Gnod, v1, v2, respectively, I can echo, or I can concatenate those two strings. So I'm concatenating a uh, space in between the two, uh, you know, first name, last name, and echoing that then would print Jerry with a space, Gnod. Anyway, so that concludes this brief overview of some of the real basics of um, of PHP. This is the uh, this is up to compound data types. The next part, the next lecture, will be on compound data types, objects, and some other things within um, PHP. But uh, what I've given you so far is probably enough to create actually some fairly simple uh, PHP uh, programs. Um, but uh, and, and there's obviously a lot more that you can do with the language than I've shown you here. But we'll get to that uh, soon enough. So anyway, that concludes this lecture.